<sighs> In recent years, Gibson has become the company that we love to hate. They've since tried a rebirth in 2018 when they were bought out by an investment firm and seem to be making a lot of good moves. Mark Agnesi from Norm's Rare Guitars came on board and they've had what seemed to be a lot of improvements. Uh, a lot of the 2019 model Gibsons were vast improvements. They kind of got rid of some of the gimmicky guitars and the robot tuners and all of those kinds of things and really seem to return to their roots of making great guitars for players. But more recently, Gibson has become more known by being a litigious bull shark in the waters of musical companies. So more recently, uh, and even this year, there have been multiple new cases filed um, against Gibson or from Gibson, and there's been a lot of misinformation um, on forums, on Facebook groups, on social media in general, I've seen a lot of stuff that just isn't true. And frankly, for a while, I believed some of it. I believed that Gibson was just going out and suing a bunch of people, um, when in fact, that's not actually the case. Um, certainly, they have threatened legal action, and in some cases, they have sued. But Gibson's not just going out left and right, filing lawsuits against companies. In fact, the company issued a statement, basically said they want to collaborate with companies. They don't want it to be competitive in nature, particularly in the legal realm. Um, and while I'm not on one side or the other, I own a Gibson guitar. It's a great guitar. I have no affiliation with the company. The company doesn't pay me. The company's never given me anything. Heck, I've never even talked to somebody that I know that works for the company aside from Summer and Ham. And I think that there's been a lot of maybe misplaced hatred towards Gibson. Um, certainly, I think some of it is warranted, but I'm just going to kind of go over some of the basic details in the different cases to better explain maybe why Gibson is doing this and maybe why there is some merit to what they're doing, but I'll let you make your own decision. So all of the stuff I'm going to talk about, I, I pulled from primary source articles, um, places like guitar.com, uh, Guitar World, Guitar Player, different places such as that. So I will have that all linked in the description below so you can read for yourself and hopefully this will help you to kind of clear the air but also to do your own research since this will not be fully comprehensive but a brief overview kind of of each case. So I'm going to start with Heritage Guitars. So Heritage is built in the original Gibson Kalamazoo factory that Gibson vacated in the mid 80s and a couple of the uh, people that worked for Gibson at the time stayed back founded Heritage, bought some of them in the original equipment, and that kind of thing. So in 91, Gibson and Heritage kind of had it out in trademark court and had reached kind of a quiet agreement to uh, agree to continue making their own respective guitars and they would kind of let each other be. Even though there are obvious similarities between the two, they had reached an agreement. So in early 2020, Gibson claimed that Heritage had since basically infringed upon those in certain ways they weren't super specific about, but said that Heritage had infringed on that agreement and basically said Heritage needs to go out of business and that seemed to be the only thing that would satisfy them. Now all of this is according to Heritage. I personally haven't seen any legal documents if they do exist um, for the public viewing at least, so I can't say for sure. But because of this, Heritage actually filed a defensive lawsuit against Gibson. Now, I'm sure this was anticipation for another lawsuit, and Heritage saw it advantageous to go ahead and try to file a suit first to get the upper hand. So it didn't seem like anything they were doing was simply uh, retaliatory, but that it was, in fact, um, in presupposing that there would be legal action coming. I'm not a lawyer. I know very little about the legal system and lawsuits and countersuits and these kinds of things, uh, so I won't pretend to know. But those are at least the facts that I've been kind of able to disseminate on the Heritage case. Now more recently, uh, a brand that we all tend to love in the guitar world called Callings, uh, founded by Bill Callings, who makes incredible guitars. They're a company that's been around for a little while. Um, I know at least the past 
10 years or so, Collings has been one of those guitars that for me has been unattainable, uh, but hopefully someday I will be able to attain. I've, I've played multiple, um, and every time I do, it's really a surreal experience. They're just excellently crafted guitars. They look great, they play great, they sound great. Um, but apparently, Gibson has opposed their headstock trademark. So I'm gonna show a picture here, and on the far left, you will see Collings headstock, and the three on the right, you will see Gibson's trademark headstocks. So these are some that are on Gibson guitars or Epiphone guitars. And essentially, Gibson is saying that the Collings look so close that it could be confused with their trademark and will actually kind of water down the value of their trademarks. I don't have a strong opinion either way on this. I think there are only so many ways that you can make a headstock. Um, while Gibson certainly has some iconic looking guitars and you could make the argument that the headstocks are part of that, I don't know that the Collings is so similar. And practically, if we're just being honest and looking at this as guitar players, I would never confuse a Gibson for a Collings. I can see the case for uh, some of the lawsuit era 70s and 80s Ibanez and Takai and other uh, Asian brands that looked like Gibson's and had even maybe the same headstock and same body carbs and all of that as Gibson's and were being sold as much less, I can understand the reasoning there because if some unsuspecting consumer goes into a pawn shop and sees a single cutaway guitar that looks just like a Gibson but it's $400, they may be saying to themselves, wow, I'm getting a Gibson Les Paul or a guitar that looks like something that my idols played and I'm paying only $400 for it or some astronomically low price. You can't really make that case with Collings. Uh, Collings makes high-end boutique guitars, um, particularly some of the models that I've looked at that I'm really interested in are four, five, six thousand dollar guitars. So you're not going to just casually confuse that for a Gibson. If you're planning on spending that much on a guitar, you probably know what you're looking at and what you're looking for. And again, I don't think practically you're gonna confuse a Collings for a Gibson. Again, this is not Gibson filing a lawsuit against Collings, at least as of the filming of this video. This is just an opposition to their trademark because they think it looks a lot like their headstock. So you be the judge if you think that has merit. Um, the Dean case is similar. So this is actually Dean's parent company, Armadillo, who was sued because they're saying that uh, they infringed trademarks on the Flying V, the Explorer, the ES, the SG, the Dove Wing headstock, and the Hummingbird and Modern names. Now, What's really interesting about this case is Gibson did not just say that they infringed trademarks, but they actually went as far as to accuse them of trademark counterfeiting. Now, for those of you that don't know the difference, essentially infringing a trademark would be me making a guitar that looked like a Gibson, and it was just close enough that it might would be confused. But Gibson's actually saying by, saying, by suing them for trademark counterfeiting, the Dean intentionally made guitars that were Gibson ripoffs to confuse buyers. So this is kind of a different level. One, legally, uh, there's a lot more ramifications for Dean if they're found guilty of this, both monetarily and otherwise. Um, but this is this is kind of where we get into some of the weirdness with some of these Gibson cases. With Cases like this of Dean were kind of, again, reminded of the Mark Agnesi video and the Play Authentic video. And essentially, they're saying that Deans are just fake Gibsons, by saying this in layman's terms. And this is, this is just kind of a weird, a weird case. I don't think Dean has ever intended to just make knockoff Gibsons. I think maybe there are a lot of companies, particularly a lot of Asian-based companies, that have certainly done this and things you can buy on AliExpress and different things like that. Um, but Dean is kind of its own animal. Um, I'll show a picture here. This shows the very popular Dean V style next to a Gibson V. Um, a lot of us will associate the Dean V and Z and some of their other shapes um, with Dimebag Daryl and a lot of other players over the years who didn't play Gibson but played Dean guitars. So there's certainly heritage to the brand. Uh, they've been around for a while. Dean Zielinski founded the brand. 
Um, and it's it's just weird to me that Gibson would go that extra mile, especially this late in the game when Dean's been making most of these guitars for a long time. Another recent case uh, similar to that has been the Kiesel, Kiesel guitars. I apologize for my likely mispronunciation. Um, but essentially their V design and their California single uh, has warranted a cease and desist, both of them individually from Gibson. basically threatening legal action. So, uh, Kiesel, Kiesel, again, apologize for the botch pronunciation, has basically said, Gibson's gonna have to sue us. We don't think our guitars look anything like this. And I kind of tend to agree. They're saying that Gibson is just kind of feeding off of emotion, but they are confident that they have facts and logic and reason on their side. Um, and again, I, I kind of have to agree on this one. I think, uh, Gibson may be pulling at straws in this case. Now, full disclaimer, Gibson uh, again has said that uh, a lot of these cases were up and rolling before uh, the new management took over, so a lot of these kind of legal issues were already in play, particularly with the Dean case that's been going on for four or five years. Um, but some of these are really new, and maybe one of the most recent and most obscure has been with satellite amps. So satellite amps in 2016, by their own reckoning, filed a trademark for the Coronet name. Now the Epiphone Coronet was a guitar that was built in the 60s um, and has been a pretty unpopular guitar for the most part, but recently um, has been very popular and worked really well for them. So essentially, uh, the owner of satellite amps has gone on record and said that there is there at the time was no Gibson or Epiphone Coronet being made, and so they decided to make a high-end boutique version of it and call it the same thing. They used the name Coronet. Now, Gibson is saying that they have been producing the guitar for artists in limited capacities since 2008 under, I believe, the Epiphone name. So essentially what they're saying is they own the trademark and they even filed to confirm the Coronet trademark. Um, this one's tricky. Satellite Amps actually offered to sell Gibson the Coronet name back, so essentially sell them back the trademark for much less than it would cost them both to fight it out in court. Um, this is strange to me because clearly Gibson has some ownership of this name and brand, um, but at the same time Satellite Amps saw a hole in the market, no one was building the guitar, and so they decided to build the guitar. Now it is very clearly basically the same thing. Um, the headstock is different, of course they don't use the Gibson name on it. Uh, but it is the likeness of the guitar. So with a lot of these cases, there's a lot of gray area over body shapes and this kind of thing. They're not using Gibson parts. They're not using the Gibson name. But in the case of satellite amps, they're using the name of a really popular guitar. Now they're building them way up to spec. They're not pretending that Gibson is building them. They're about $3,000, um, give or take, either way, depending on your specs. So they're certainly, again, not a cheap guitar or small investment, and certainly they have made money off of it. Again, this, this doesn't really look good for their brand, um, but this is not just Gibson going out and suing a bunch of companies. I think there are some merits in some of these cases, some of them more than others, but you make your own decision. I hope this has helped you, kind of informed you on what all of this is about. I know that uh, for myself personally, I tend to side with smaller brands uh, and go for the underdog, especially brands like Hollings that I love, but it helps to have all the facts, and I hope that this has given you some of those facts. So I want to know your thoughts. Do you think that Gibson is just bloodthirsty, or do you think that 
maybe rightly they are kind of trying to defend their name and their intellectual property. Let me know in the comments below and let's kind of discuss this. I want to know, do you think that there's merit in these cases? Which ones? Which ones do you not think have much merit? Um, let's get a good discussion going. I really want us to, to talk about this as a guitar community and get your thoughts. So if this video is helpful, leave me a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Uh, if this video was helpful and you do like these kinds of videos, again, just let me know in the comments below. And until then, we'll see you next time.